Kirby and I had a couple of players go down in, the, in that late going. Is that something that you and Will got together to decide to make that fourth quarter 10 minutes? Uh, yeah, we talked about it out there when his player was uh, injured. We just opted to do that. Uh, something that had been allowed to do to make it 10 instead of 15. And uh, he asked me to be all right. I said, yeah. So I don't know if it had anything to do with the players being injured. But then a couple guys get cramps. He didn't think any of the injuries were serious. Kirby, did he play the edge real good? They, uh, you got to be happy with the shutout anytime, I guess, uh, uh, I thought I was yeah, I'll be honest with you. I'm not one to you know, shed light on a lot of positives, but I didn't think we played to the caliber that we probably should have. But I thought defensively, we got a shutout. In this day and age, it's hard to do, okay? Especially against offenses that are in formations and rocketing and orbiting and doing things like that. It makes it you know tough to defend. But our, our kids play hard, and that's what we ask them to do. Coach, when you're rolling four running backs and all those receivers in. How much do those guys know when they finally get a play call for them, you better take advantage? Yeah, I don't think they think about it that way. I think they think about it like if I have an opportunity to go block and crack, you know, I thought that Riley was physical in his blocking today. I thought that Charlie had a couple good blocks, several guys. You know, they look at it as when my roll's up and they call me to go watch somebody, I better do it good or I might not be back in here. And uh, the motivating factor is I've got to do great things without the ball not necessarily great things with the ball. Um, Coach, how did your team fall? Oh, sorry. With uh, the Idris uh, Robertson on the touch that he had to, to uh, finally open his first touchdown, I mean, what was kind of your thought on that? He was the guy who you had said earlier in camp was conditioned. And he had to go through the whole waiver process. So, oh, what are you? Your thoughts on his, on his opportunity there? I was happy for him. You know, I thought his first touch to get a touchdown it was incredible. It's awesome for a kid that's uh, been all over the country. And, uh, but today he should have came here the first time. So <laughs> he's here now, and uh, that was his first touch. So I'm, I'm happy for him. But he's not in condition that he should be in. He'll tell you that. And he ran out of gas on that run. So in the SEC, that might not have been a touchdown. So we want to encourage him to keep getting in shape so that he can turn that into a touchdown when playing SEC opponent. How did your team uh, get better today? I think just the experience, the atmosphere. You know, I, I don't, you know, I hope that we can grow and learn from the mistakes because you get to coach off the first tape. Uh, there's a lot of things that we can improve on, and uh, a lot of it starts with tackling and blocking and getting more movement. We'll play better team. Let's all be honest. We're going to play teams that have more talent. So we've got to be able to execute at a higher clip and not have some some of those games for two and three yards that might be lost yards plays against somebody else. We can't have those uh, negative plays offensively. And then defensively, we were soft on a couple runs where they got four or five yards. We can't do that. We can't live in second in the mediums, second shorts in our conference. So I think the biggest thing we'll get out of today is experience. Because we had a lot of players play today that didn't have experience that gained experience. Coach, you mentioned the quarterback situation would be fluid. Can you just talk about uh, what went through, how you substitute, what went through your mind as it went? Yeah, we, we learned last year, guys, that the quarterback situation could change with an injury. So we want to be prepared. Um, that's no difference than last year with uh, Jacob and Jake. We were in the same plan with Jake. If we got a, a lead or a comfortable lead that we felt comfortable with, that we could play and get experience for Justin and other players. We'll continue to evaluate it that way. You know, I think that you guys make a lot bigger deal out than it is. I think we've got two good quarterbacks. I think both of them got better today. And the way they get better is by playing. So, you know, we'll make those decisions based on every game. Coach, how did you let uh, Maytrez and D'Angelo Gibbs know that they'd be playing today? Uh, I never really had to talk to Maytrez or D'Angelo Gibbs about that. I mean, that was handled in the past. So, we didn't have a monumental occasion or anything. We just communicate who's up and rotate guys. And those guys have uh, served their discipline, served their punishment practice. Do you, do you foresee a, a rotation continuing or would you like to get more settled in on the seven? Continuing rotating the O-line. Linebacker, linebackers, interior inside linebackers. Oh yeah, we're going to have to rotate. I mean, we can't play two linebackers, guys. Football's a tough physical game, especially when it's high. So I mean, we, had to, we had to sub Roquan last year. He was a top eight pick. So I mean, we're going to have to play players, especially in tough places to play when it's the afternoon and it's hot. So we want to create depth.
we'll, we'll play the best players. That's always what it's going to boil down to. But we also have to be well conditioned. You know, I know the rules being what they are. You probably, you guys probably worked some on the whole targeting thing or whatever. What were your thoughts on on James's penalty there? Yeah, just a poor, 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 poor decision. I mean, the kids playing tough, a lot of effort. We were actually were subbing out. You know, Miko was in that spot. We took Miko out late in the game. We were giving James one of his first punt reps. He didn't see the fair catch, so it wasn't like he was intent to harm. I never saw the fair catch myself either. I was really early, so I didn't think he fair caught it. But whether he fair catches that ball or not, we teach you to break down and never lead with the head. And you know, he doesn't tackle every day for a living. We put him in tackling drills because we have to put those guys in tackling drills with special teams. But just not a good decision, kind of a rookie mistake, and it's really unfortunate because he's a really good player and uh, he'll be missed the first half. Can you talk about Channing Tindall and his progression since he's gotten on campus to this point? What what you've seen out of him? Channing's an extremely athletic young man. He's trying to comprehend and learn a lot of the things we're doing de uh, defensively, but he can run and he's tough. And he's a great kid. He's really positive. I thought he played well on the special teams. I got to see him play. He didn't get to play a lot of linebacker until the second half, but we got to get him ready to play because he has a quality that uh, some of our other guys don't have, which is. Fast. Coach, how do you think Tyson Campbell did? Hard to say when I watched the tape. You know, I saw the one throw over on the sideline. He made a nice play, but uh, he had some nerves. He missed some checks that we make him check. He missed some things, but he was nervous. I mean, it's, it's your first game in that stadium. It's, it's uh, nerve wracking. I think he'll gain some confidence, and that's what we wanted him to do today. Kirby had to get three true freshman offensive linemen in the third quarter uh, in the game. Do you think, uh, you know, in your entire games, you'll be relying on those guys? Or We'll be relying on the best offensive line that we can put out there. It doesn't matter the age. I, mean, I don't look at those guys because of the guys you're talking about. I'm assuming you're talking about two of them were here in the spring. So it's hard to call them freshmen because they went through so much work. It's not just the 15 practices, it's the 20 meetings you had in between the 15 practices. So those kids are, are growing, they're maturing. We need them to grow up, and if they're the best players, they'll play. You have some positive things to say about Tyson during, during camp. What was it that kind of finally maybe put his, put his head, you know, move him over the hump when it came to starting tonight today. I think just a gut instinct that he's the next best guy. I mean, he's uh, athletic, fast, strong, had good ball skills. I mean, at some point you got to make a decision on who you want to go, go play with. And, you know, Stokes came in and played a, a lot of snaps for, uh, for Bake. I mean, I thought Stokes played well, but uh, we just feel like Tyson was the best guy to go with at this point. Were you able to see much of your thoughts about him? How Justin did. I thought early in the game he was a little nervous. You know, he had a couple uh, uh, plays where things broke down a little bit. And he created. Um, maybe they go to his first read and he took off. And, um, I encouraged him to not take a hit. And his first play, he ran over like two guys. So I told him that was not really what we were looking for. <laughs> and, uh, he uh, he took better care of himself the rest of the time. And that's a conversation we have with both quarterbacks. We got to be careful. Got two quarterbacks right now. What did you see out of uh, D'Angelo Gibbs? And it looked like he worked at both the star and in the second half back at safety. Where, where does he fit in now? He's star and safety. That's where he works. That's where he practices. Uh, he's growing and getting better. I think he's getting confidence in the defensive system. Where last year he played a little bit, but not sure he knew or was comfortable knowing what exactly he had to do. The safety position he's playing, the star position he plays, are tied, tied together. So one can't know what the other's doing without kind of sharing it. So those two positions tie together well. He had a couple good plays today, but he also had some that he, he didn't do as well. So I hope he continues to get better because we need depth in the secondary. If uh, we were to lose somebody in the secondary, it would be uh, it'd be scary. So we, we've got to get guys ready to play. And I thought he went in there and did a good job. Today. Do you think Godwin will be able to go next week? I lost you beginning there. I'm sorry, did you get out of this game relatively healthy? And do you think Terry will be able to go next week? Yeah, Justin had a little bit of an ankle sprain. Uh, Justin Young had a, uh, a little bit of a knee sprain. Uh, but I think you know, Justin was able to play, feels that we played with his. Um, you know, Kiaris and Jason were kind of play if they have to, thought they could have gone. They both got soft tissue injuries. And then Terry has worked out the last two days really well, um, but didn't know if he would play or not, so we held him. So we really need those three wide outs back. Um, they all give us something different especially with James out possibly now, you've got to have these, these three pass wideouts to help us. Gordon, at halftime, your foundation gave $5,000 to the family at Austin, the assistant coach, uh, obviously has a special needs child. I'm wondering if you just speak to how that story and 
touch you, your family, and your fan base, and how they react. Yeah, my wife reached out to me um, when the, that story got ran in uh, Dog Nation, I think it was, and you know, their office of line coach came up to me, and I was really emotional and very appreciative, not of just our family foundation, but UGA period. And uh, Coach Healy, before the game, even made mention that it's meant so much to their spirits, to the family, and uh, that they wouldn't be where they are without the support of UGA. I think it's just indicative of our university and our people to see what's been done for by Gales and see what's been done because Austin Peel and I and coach, I think it's a special deal. How about Richard uh, LeCamp, mm -hmm. your thoughts on him? You know, there wasn't, uh, it seems like there's a lot there. A couple checks he might have missed, but he was very confident in walkthroughs. I really thought he carried himself well. And uh, I told him that he's been building up this moment for two years. And the, the reason we've been really hard on him is so that it's easy in the game. And uh, I thought he keep things well. Didn't get challenged a lot, you know, so the verdict's still out. As far as our, our past defense on secondary, he didn't get challenged. I mean, they, they tried to roll him up. Coach, as uh, far as the ability to get the K Mays and Justin Shake on the field, the extra blocker, how long has that you've been working on that? How effective do you think that could be moving forward? Well, I think it depends on how every defense plays it. You know, every defense is going to have a different uh, mechanism, different different checks. You know, the, the, everybody will play it different. So when you go big, they got to go big. Find out how they're going to play it. And uh, that one says we got to run it. And they're big guys and they're physical, and we didn't get a lot out of this game, so maybe we shouldn't have done it. Just as a concern on the third matchup between you and Will, is it any easier or harder going up against somebody that you've known for such a long time, the third time or fourth time, etc.? Yeah, it's never easy with Will because I got a lot of respect for him as a coach and a person. I mean, uh, our careers have paralleled a lot, and I think he does a tremendous job. He's got a lot of respect for the way he coaches and the way they, their team plays. So it's, it's not easy, but it's not about being high either. It's about Coach, players. Coach, how was your game day experience out of your new facility and all that? Well, it was a lot cooler and a lot roomier. I mean, we're able to <laughs> flex and stretch and do a lot of things that we weren't able to do. I, I did get a little confused there at the end of the half. I was ready to go the other way before I realized why was everybody going the other way. So, <laughs> uh, it's nice in there. It's a, it's a first class facility. And I think the biggest benefit is you guys ever let me get out of here, I get to go over and see our 200 recruits, so I can speed it up. Last question. Kirby, <laughs> 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 in real time, was there anything you can specific you could find into about what kind of you could test the frustrations with, with today? Is there anything specific you feel like you guys didn't do up this enough? Just body language and demeanor on the field. There's times that we don't play with a sense of urgency, guys walking around. Get up on the line, get set, let's go. I thought there were times that we weren't real well conditioned. We didn't get tested in conditions. We didn't get, you know, it was like, we only played so many snaps, but we got to get up and go play. Just body language is probably the biggest thing. I was disappointed.